Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice for you. Today, we have one of my favorite episodes, and that is a success story or really just an entrepreneurial journey story. That is a mouthful for sure. I can't stand the word entrepreneur. But anyway, here we are back with a, a guest who I'm excited to dive in and unpack his story. And it probably relates a lot to yours. I know it relates a lot to mine and my past. Um, so before we go any further, Mike Sinelli, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it, Brandon. Yeah, I, I'm excited to dive in here. We're going to talk about creating success, but not not the world's definition of success. What does success look like for you? And your story incorporated with that is overcoming emotional healing. So um, let's kind of start in the past. I'm curious, when you say creating success amidst emotional healing, what are we healing from? What, like, what happened in your life that you were that you had to redefine success? So uh, I lost my mom at a young age when I was seven years old. Um, my dad remarried and kind of abandoned me. Uh, he didn't like leave me, but he, he put all his time into my stepmother. And I just felt that I grew up alone. And so I felt that I had to work hard to overcome that trauma. And I and I felt that I was a failure. And so I ended up using, started using drugs at a young age, heroin, crack cocaine, uh, lived on the streets for a while, uh, in and out of rehabs, in and out of jail, and uh, just could never find my footing in the, in life. I felt like I, ne I wasn't comfortable in my skin. Um, and so after a, a long journey, um, I finally went through a rehab, got clean, started a business, and, uh, built some success. I had uh, several rental properties, um, some Airbnbs and some different short term rentals and stuff. And, um, and I took on way too much, found success, flipped some houses and lost some money, felt like a failure and ended up relapsing, going back into my, my drug, the drug addiction. And I just always felt like a failure. And even to this day, I feel like a failure. But in the midst of that, I realized that I was not healing from that trauma over the years. I would just put Band-Aids on it, uh, you know, get distracted, whatever I could do to not think about those things. And they always continue to boil up and affect my life. So that's when I really started doing some really hard heart work christian counseling is a huge uh part of my story learning how to talk about those things uh learning how to be honest with my wife and tell her the things that i struggle with um learning to be honest with my uh with the people in my business sphere you know the people that i come in contact with my tenants um and 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 re writing a book was a huge part of my healing because I was able to dive into detail all those th things that I struggled with and um, and thinking about them in detail was really, really hard, but it was the most healing thing that I've ever done. And um, there was a day in a hotel room. I write it in my book. I was uh, had a gram of heroin. I, uh, I was on a, with, in a hotel room with my wife. She took my dad, my dog for a walk and I cried out to the Lord and dumped out that heroin I never dumped out drugs ever. I would use until I was stopped by something. And that day I cried out and dumped that heroin down the toilet. And, um, I was healed that day. And, um, you know, there's a lot to the story, read it in the book, reinvented. But um, 
but I feel like I was healed in Jesus name that day. Mm, no, no more powerful name to be healed in. First of all. Um, yeah. And I, I find that there's no real other way to be healed. Everything else is a bandaid. Um, that that's the only way to be truly healed and overcome. And I'm, I'm curious because that's, first of all, really good cliffhanger. Uh, we're going to put the book in the show notes, the link to the book down below. Uh, it actually comes out the same day that this goes live. So if you're listening right away, if you're a subscriber, go check out that link, grab the book um, and and uh, read the full story in there. Get all the juicy details. Um, but no, thank you, Mike, for for sharing that and being vulnerable and open. Um, I'm curious, you know, you have you have, again, the world's definition of success. You have you're investing in real estate, you're doing Airbnbs flips um you're you're making money i assume at some point and then like you said you, you start to lose money on deals what was it that you were you said you felt like a failure but like what were the stories that were coming up for yourself and, and did you find that telling yourself those stories was causing some sort of sort of a, a self-sabotage like and what i really want to get at is you had success you were doing something right but you found a way to go back and lose money on these deals. So what, like, what was that for you? Because I have a feeling somebody listening may be doing the same thing, maybe not look exactly the same, but some version of that to themselves. Yeah. I always felt like success was, I have to make a million dollars or I have to uh, be noticed by somebody prominent in the world, you know, or there, a lot of the, the success that I was, uh, chasing after was out of uh, envy and greed and the gimmicks of this world to try to be something, somebody. And uh, Jesus says that we are somebody to him and we don't need to chase those things. So I find that now I start chasing gratitude and grace and looking for areas that I can help people. And, and I define success as how many people I can help in my journey. And you know what I find throughout my journey in helping others, the money shows up. The, the money's there. I, I have 18 rental units. I, I spend two and a half months in Florida and South Florida every year. I have a house down there. Not to, not to share that as like, oh my goodness, look at me. I'm sharing that because my drive now is grace and gratitude and helping people. And I get to do those things. I don't even know how it comes sometimes, you know, it's like the Lord just is dropping it in my lap, but not to say it's not hard work. There's perseverance, there's hard work, but perseverance and hard work bring reward. I talk about it in my book. Again, my mom used to always tell me that before she died of lung cancer. And um, I truly believe that chasing grace and gratitude and helping others the money follows yeah it's you know it sounds like a scam honestly like I, <laughs> that's that's not not to me but on the surface like it really yeah. does where but a number of people say it where if you if you just seek to serve others and help others money will come it, it really does sound backwards but i find that it's a hundred percent true it's true all of the time the more people you can help, things just start to happen in your life. And when you put, I think the real thing is when you put others first and not yourself and you, you stop serving your ego and your image, um, you know, to, to reference the Bible, idolatry is obviously uh, a bad thing in the Bible in a number of places. I personally believe that when you put yourself first, it's a form of idolatry and you're putting yourself as, as the idol. So when you can shift that, you can put the Lord first, you can serve that mission and serve other people through that mission. Yeah. Resources just tend to show up. Yeah, It's amazing. It is amazing. It's really amazing. Um, something that just came to mind, uh, the, some, a, a part of my healing journey, um, my wife uh, and her family are very close. They're Latins, right? And um, she would spend time talking with them over the phone. And I started to find myself getting um, frustrated and upset that I felt like she wasn't putting me first, right? Because of I was struggling with my healing. And I was started to pray about that and noticed through paying attention to healing and, and, and counseling and all that stuff, I realized that it was because of something that happened in my childhood after my mom passed away 
that my dad would spend time uh, on the phone counseling. He was a pastor and he would counsel other families. And I didn't even think about that. But during this journey, I made the connection and that was a powerful healing moment. And so just to give some perspective on a specific situation that you don't realize how your body remembers these traumatic experiences or these things that have really wounded you in the past and how they're affecting your future or your present um, in such powerful ways. And, it, and until we make that connection, the healing won't come. You know, and it's only by the power of the Lord that he can help us see those connections. Yeah, you uh, I, I've seen studies done where you actually like emotional trauma actually embeds itself in your body. Like you have to get rid of it or else there will be physical markers of it, um, yes. whether through disease or or like actual physical pain. Um, it's It's very interesting that how that that whole cycle plays itself out. But then also those triggers like like with your wife how it comes up and triggers the same emotions yeah. until you fix it. And yeah, that's, that's crazy. So talk to me about this journey. You have a uh, quick question. When you were the, the heroin down the toilet, when you flushed it and you, you actually got clean, how roughly how many rental properties did you have? Uh, at the time I had about 20. Oh, okay. So yeah. Still I very still, successful. Yeah. Um, still very successful. But the thing was, is that I started losing, I was in massive debt. Um, I, would, I was leveraged up to here. I, you know, any, any wrong move and I would have lost it all. Um, and so getting clean helped me realize. So I sold a bunch of stuff, backed off. I went down to 10 rental units. Um, I took another, I took a sales job and started selling, um, uh, stuff you know other i took another job to a side hustle so to speak to pay down my debts um got on a budget and and was able to pay down all my debts and and then started buying again and now we're back up to 18. yeah no interesting journey there so um i'm curious what did you learn from a business perspective going from 20 paying off your debt now building it back the right way like what are you from 10 to 18 where you are now what are some of the things that you put in place for, for yourself and for your business that are now just like foundational ways that you run your business? I found that my, uh, I had to find my niche, like flipping houses is not my niche because I find that I want to do things uh, excellent and uh, I don't want to put a bandaid on a pig, so to speak, or, or paint on a pig or whatever they say. Like, um, uh, to flip a house, you have to be, you have to cut corners and stuff. So that's not my niche. You know, um, my niche is buying some, a duplex or a triplex, multiple units, um, fixing them up really well and keeping them long-term, um, putting large down payments, keeping the payment low, the, the mortgage low, um, all the renovations in cash no construction loans anymore, no credit cards, no credit lines. Um, those, those things almost were the detriment to me, um, having so much debt, but, um, that's my niche. And then I do, I like to do, um, uh, traveling nurses, traveling professionals, short-term stuff. Um, you can make more money monthly than you could on traditional rents. But I've also got into Section 8. There are certain zip codes that um, have high, high rents that Section 8 pays out. And it's helping people. It's helping somebody that's low income get into a really nice place. A lot of low income housing is, is, is not well taken care of. And so the people have no choice because it, there's not many of them out there. And so I felt like that was something to get into. And it's still financially beneficial. The state still pays out a, a high dollar, you know, on cer in certain zip codes. So you have to do your research. But those are all things that I was able to, I found my niche in getting into rentals that I can fix up, keep long term and um, make sure the cash flow on them is high. Well, those are definitely good principles. Um, and it sounds like if I'm reading between the lines based on your previous story and what you said there, you really do try to focus on making 
making both sides win. Obviously, you have to win financially. Like you can't keep doing this if you're broke. Um, and, and the renter needs to win too because they can't keep paying you if, if the rent's too high or if they're getting an unfair deal. Um, so I, I mean, hopefully I'm hearing that right. And in the one situation where somebody does lose, it's uh, it's the Section 8, it's the government, which I'm a fan of the government losing. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm mean, glad they're paying for it and, yeah. and both parties are still winning. Right. I think also is giving them a quality place to live that yeah. they can feel that is that they're happy to live in, that it's, it's nice finishes, it's not, uh, it's in a decent neighborhood and they can feel proud of a place that they can live. I, my company's name is Reinvented Concepts and my tagline is um, rental property reinvented or rentals reinvented. And it's, you know, uh, how we can reinvent a rental property and put somebody in there that's gonna be excited to live there and, uh, and feel good and confident that they have a nice place to live. Yeah. I mean, that's just a foundational business principle, right? Like if, if the whole marketplace accepts one thing, there's probably an opportunity on the flip side of that. So for you, I think the, the, the rental market, uh, the real estate investor market is, is definitely saturated. People talk about it on the internet all the time. Um, and the general conversation is always, you know, buy low, sell high, right? It's, it's, how can I do this the cheapest for the most affordable and make the most money? I feel like you're doing it. You have a different approach to it, which is very much in line with who you are as a person, as far as, you know, I, I can tell from this conversation um, and you're winning because of it, but so are your renters and your tenants, which is fantastic. You, you found a way to flip the script. So good for you for sure. Absolutely. Thank you. So Mike, I, I appreciate you coming on here and sharing your story. Um, I, I want to, I want to dig in more to your story. There's not enough time, but good thing there's a book coming out about it um, <laughs> where we can also learn all the juicy details, like I said before, and, and really see where you were and how you got through it to the other side. And I, I think that will inspire other people as well. So I put your website on the screen here for you listening. Um, everything's in the show notes, the book link, everything will be down below. Um, but Mike, what, is, what does somebody get when they go and, and grab your book? Like what's, what's the outcome of your story that you hope somebody walks away with? that Jesus is the only way to be healed. Um, Christian counseling is a huge benefit, but commit yourself to the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He'll change your heart to his desires and you'll be able to help people. But this book has some gritty details. I've been kidnapped. I've uh, been through 17 rehabs uh you know shot dope a long time so it has some really gritty stories in there but uh it's a redemption story all the way and the lord has changed my life that's absolutely fantastic and like i said before there's no other way to change your life permanently so yeah. um that's the best way so i hope i hope all the listeners go out and buy a copy of that book um if you if you're skeptical if you don't know the lord if you're like i don't know if that's for me uh, just do it and take our word for it. <laughs> yeah. Take the risk. Yeah. It's, it's well worth it. It's uh, yeah. One of those things where it's really not a risk. So just go, well, go do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's true. I hear what you're saying, but yeah, yeah. it's the, uh, the, the least risky thing you'll ever do. Um, so yeah, Mike, thank you for being here. This was a, a phenomenal episode. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you. All right. For you listening, watching wherever you are first of all thank you we love having you here we do this show for you to hopefully disrupt the way you think about your business and share these success stories too and so you can be inspired to continue to pursue your journey and grow your business whatever your story looks like so go visit mikesinelli.com go grab a copy of the book it comes out today if you're listening on the day this episode releases otherwise it is definitely already out and I hope you uh, put a comment, say you grab the book on whatever platform you are. And I hope to see you on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Thanks for listening.